What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another episode of the Premier League's Perspective, where we have a look at the weekend or midweek games at this case. Um, we talk about how it kind of has an effect on Tottenham and just the general kind of feel about what's going on in the Premier League right now. Mm -hmm. Shall we get into it, Sim? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. All right. And let's start off with the turf more performance. Burnley nil, Manchester United won. Um, I watched that game and I felt that first half, I wasn't that impressed with Man United, but second half, they really did come out to play. And I felt that they deserved their win. And I think they deserve to be top of the league right now. I really do. Yeah, look. Um, I've been I've been saying United you know, are going to drop, and I've uh, and um, previous performances I've I've justified that. But you know what? I was watching the game on Monday night, and I must say I was impressed. I was impressed with them how they performed in the second half. They kept patient. They didn't let um, miss chances or anything get to them. They weren't really off, um, giving Burnley any encouragement at all, going the other way. And it always seemed like a matter of time before they scored. And and then they did end up getting the goal, and then they shut up shop. And except for one scary moment right at the end when uh, Tarkowski probably should have scored, they were fine. And I must say that performance, even more than a lot of the other performances they put this season, made me think like, oh god, maybe they really are that good. Um, I'm still hope. I'm still thinking. Look. They they look they are six points above us. I know in this kind of season, it, six points seems like twelve points because it's just how how like maybe even more. You know what I mean? It just seems like that because yeah, like because of how close everything is. Like four points seems like eight points. You know what I mean? But um, six points isn't a lot. But the way the way they're attacking with Rashford, Martial, Bruno, Bruno feeding them with Cavani up top holding the ball up, that is a fearsome front four. Really fearsome. And they at the moment. You know, if they can keep clean sheets, they're always going to have goals in them. And with Pogba putting in performances like he did yes uh, on um, Monday or Tuesday night, then they really might be a force. I've got a feeling that they they've had kind of, I wouldn't say an easy one, a easy run because there's no easy run in the Premier League. But I would say that their fi fixtures have been slightly favourable uh, since their kind of run has been kind of going well. I, I think that when United do come under a sticky patch and a hard run, I do feel that they're going to start dropping points again. I'm sure they'll, they're, they're, they're going to drop plenty plenty of points from now to the end of the season. But I was just thinking, I was just looking at the game on, on Tuesday and I was watching it and I was thinking, I can't see any other result than a Man United win while watching this game. Like They really did impress me. I thought they controlled the game really well. I thought this was a game they were going to really struggle in and they didn't. I thought they... They well, thought they got through well. They, they struggled first half. I, I, but even I first half, they had a goal ruled out. Yeah, they, I mean, that, know, that, that goal, let's talk about that goal being ruled out because I thought it's, a, it's becoming a joke, all this thing. Like, maybe the it was. VAR didn't rule out, the referee ruled No, the ruled referee out. ruled yeah. it out. And I was like, come on, man. He hardly did anything. It was yeah. like, come on. He got the header. He, he climbed above the man and got the ball. Imagine, imagine um, a penalty was given for that. Yeah, you know it's just mean? like the game is absolutely gone if you're ruling out goals for that. Yeah, I think it was a ridiculous decision. I think VAR should have overruled it. Um, I think it was definitely not a foul by Maguire. And I thought it was a really poor decision by the referee. And I, United probably rightly frustrated at that. Um, I thought the, the other decision where Cavani was fouled when he was one-on-one, -on -one, I thought that was the right decision to pull it back because I thought that was a definite foul by Shaw. I thought the referee dealt with that well, but I thought, yeah, Maguire's one definitely should have been. Shaw should have been sent off. It was a close. It was touch and go. It was touch and go. I think he, he's a bit lucky, but I think it was ultimately it was it was a fair decision. Yellow card. I think it was a bit oh. lucky though because it was a bit of a dangerous tackle. But you know what? But United, if they keep up performances like this, um, patient, controlled, and just waiting for their moment, I think they could be in for it because I thought they defended well and they attacked well. Who do you want to win this weekend? Man U or Liverpool? Draw. Draw. I would take a draw right now. I would take a draw. But but obviously, Liverpool at the moment. Anything but a Man U win. To yeah, anything. Honest. But you can't. we can't have United winning that game. We cannot if have United, United beat Liverpool that. at Anfield, you know how much confidence that's going to yeah, give them going into be, the season. That'll now. be a big, big worry. Big worry. It'll be a massive win if they get it, if they get that over the line this weekend. Massive. A big statement win as well. Yeah. And, you know, we nearly got a result at Anfield. So, you, like, it's going to be a close game, I think. But I, I hope I'm hoping you know um, Liverpool can get do something because it opens real. If Liverpool get a result, then like obviously the title race is just anyone. Like it is anyone still, but you know, Man United have a little tiny gap but now, you know, and it you, wipes out that gap if they lose. Yeah, 
Exactly. I mean, if if Liverpool can get a result and then we get a result this weekend, that does put us only three points behind exactly. the top Exactly. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, I don't know. You, you don't know what to think about what, about the season. Like, who's doing well? Who's not doing I well? Know. It's I kind know. of everyone's doing bad. That's the thing. Literally, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the honest truth of it. But look, let's move on and let's go to the Molyneux as Everton beat Wolves 2-1 at the Molyneux. In what would say, people would say it's a surprising result. Uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin out injured, Richarlison out injured. Yep. Usually when these players are out, Everton do lose, but they got over the line this one. You know what? I had them as no chance of winning this game without those two players, especially against the Wolves side, who are defensively pretty solid mm. and don't d give up uh, much spare change. And it was a close game. They did get a late winner, uh, Michael Keane with the header, really yeah. good header. Um, and it was it was a close one. It wasn't wasn't one where Everton were always going to win. It was one of those where it was it was like one all going into the latter stages. The game was always in the balance. Yeah, but it was kind of one of those where it probably. Should have ended in a draw, if you know what I mean. But because they got a goal from a set piece, they ended up taking all three points. But you got to say, impressive stuff. Impressive because to win without D Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison, we you know, they didn't have any striker on the pitch. They had James as a false nine. You know, uh, Iwobi on the right. Um, they really... I was looking at that attacking lineup, thinking, where are the goals coming from? How are they going to hurt? Um, well, Wolves. Alex Iwobi stepped up, didn't he? He did. Him and Michael Keane. And that was... And, I must say, it's an impressive victory. It is an impressive victory. And uh, you, i got to give credit to them. And, you know, with us with us not being full, and that was a big blow to us, and with uh, Everton picking up points, even yeah. with key players, it is, that's, that's the equivalent of us winning away at Wolves without Kane and Son. So, you know, it's it's the uh, it's very impressive from Everton. And if they can keep up those kind of results, they are going to be more of a threat than I thought. But I still looked at the performance and thought, I wasn't. I w it wasn't like they impressed me with the performance, but the result. They dug in deep, and they ground out. They ground out a win at the Molyneux, which is not an easy place to go. Not an easy place to go at all. Doesn't matter who they have out. Wolves. They always give a really good game. So, fair play to Everton to get the win there. All right. Uh, last game of that day was another surprising result. As Sheffield United picked up their first win of the season at home to Newcastle just before they played Tottenham Hotspur. Um, you know, the timing couldn't be worse, could it? Yeah. We do not want to be playing an on-form Sheffield United. That's uh, the last team we want to be playing, in all honesty. And uh, I know it was a, they got the 1-0 win. It was because one of those stupid second yellow cards I think I've ever seen in my life from Ryan Fraser. He's on a yellow card and he just kicks McGoldrick out of like, this is ridiculous. How can you do that on a yellow card? And he pretty much gave the advantage to Sheffield United. And then they got also a quite a quite dodgy penalty, I felt. Was it a penalty on uh, Federico Fernandez? He he does kind of swipe the ball away with his hand, but his shirt is also being pulled at the same time. So it was kind of for me, I thought maybe they can't see each other out. They decided to give the penalty, they ignored the shirt pull, and obviously Sheffield United went on to get the win. Um, that will give them a lot of confidence. That well, will give them a lot of confidence. the old guard, Billy Sharp, coming on to seal the win for them from the penalty spot. Um, look, you've got to give Sheffield United credit. Yeah, I know they were playing against 10 men, but to finally pick up that win, that first win of the season, this yeah. has got to be playing on their mind. It's definitely been playing on Chris Wilder's mind. Of course. Of course, it's got to. When you're going that many games without a win, that first big win is going to be a massive relief. And I'm sure now... On when they play us on Sunday, they're going to be well up for it now. Well up for it. They're going to be. They're going to have their tails up. And as, uh, you know, an on-form Shuffle United, they're, 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 that's a team that works really, really hard. They fight for every single ball, every 50-50. And I wouldn't look. Shuffle United could go on a run, not like like loads of wins in a row, but they can go on a run. You know, a few wins and a few draws. There's not beyond them. We saw how well they did last season. Exactly. And I know their 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 players are not that great quality. But they could, they they have the ability to dig in deep and grind out results when they when um, if they're on form, mm. and that getting that first win could really give them confidence. So it's up to us to squash that immediately. So it's going to be tough for us. I really feel like it's going to be really tough for us on the weekend. And when you look at Newcastle. Um you look at Newcastle, the last team to do so badly in the Premier League, who was it, Sunderland or Derby? Yeah, they also beat Newcastle. That was their, their, <laughs> their, last was, their first win of the season was also a 1 0 home win to Newcastle. So I remember uh, that. Newcastle love uh, giving away, giving so, their first wins. So there you go. Uh, still only a, few, only a couple points behind Arsenal, though. So. <laughs> let's hope they can, uh, they can carry on. But le let's move on to the next day and let's go to the Man City game. Man City 1, Brighton 0 at the Etihad. I mean, City are just not conceding goals at the moment. They're not, 
But it was actually, I was watching that City game and it was a, it was obviously a very close game as the scoreline suggests. Brighton were well in that game, well in that game. They had a lot of chances to, to get an equaliser. And you know what? It reminded me a lot of actually the Spurs game against Fulham. Uh, which we will, which we played on Wednesday just after this game because it was very similar because uh, like just like um, just like Spurs like City dominated the first half they got the goal um, and you expect them to go on and win the game but they didn't get the second goal and they, it was a very very nervy end whereas we conceded they had the quality to shut them out um, so you got to look City are definitely back in form now. You've got to say that. Yeah. Defensively, Stones has found something else. Yeah, he's got a bit he's of like a player reborn, isn't he? Yeah, he really has. He, um, I think he's had a lot of personal issues over the past few years, and looks like those are behind him. He's he's um, making a really good partnership with Ruben Diaz. Would you take John Stones at Spurs? If he's on this kind of form, I mean, at this kind of form, City probably won't let him go. But would I take him at Spurs? I don't think he's the, I don't think he's the kind of centre back we need to be honest. So probably not. But I think if if um, there's been a lot of rumours flying around the last couple yeah, of years. About yeah, yeah, but that's because he was out of favour. Now yeah. he's back in favour. Yeah. So I don't think that's a, that's anything we're going to be uh, entertaining anytime soon. But I think John. Yeah, John. Look, would I, I would take John Stones to Spurs. Yes, but I think as in in terms of right now and the current squad we have, he's not the kind of profile centre back I think we need. But, but does, does he still get into our side over an Eric Dyer? Probably. Over, over um, a Davidson Sanchez, yes. Definitely. <laughs> um, Toby. You know, Toby, I th- I think maybe I'll, not. I'll, I'll probably Toby, I think, still. But Toby is on the bench for us. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a bit, it's a bit strange. Um, but, he, but him and Ruben Diaz, as I was saying, really good partnership. They're Ruben developing. Diaz, what yeah, a yeah. signing. Yeah, and we that's how we, we wanted him, didn't we, at the beginning of the season, last season? Uh, beginning of the summer, I mean. And we didn't stump up the cash. Obviously, City got there in front of us. Was it 45 million or so? Yeah, and, and he's taken the, to the Premier League so easily yeah. and uh, he really looks like one of the stars um, star centre backs for this season for sure since he's really come in actually they've really looked really solid have, he didn't have a bedding in period he well, just came in much the ground running class yeah, he's been, classy, I mean yeah, he struggled again player. when we played him when we played him maybe he struggled a bit um, but I think we we were the last team to score against City I yeah, believe we were. how Very mad is that we haven't. They haven't conceded since Lascelles put that to what put that um, shot away in the second half. And you've got to give them credit because everyone was saying no one giving City a chance uh, first bit of the season. But I think they're favourites for the title now. Well, yeah, considering everyone is just bumbling all over the place, City have a pr- previous track record of um, going on long wins. They've shown that their injuries this season. The only thing that holds a question mark to me is the fact that they don't. Their strikers are struggling. Aguero and Jesus. Um, or Jesus, 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 whoever you know, people say, oh, say Jesus, all right, Jesus. Um, <laughs> um, I think uh, that's maybe that's maybe what could be the difference between them and Liverpool because Liverpool have serious injuries at the back that's going to last the whole season. City don't have that. If they can get one of their strikers on form or sign one or sign January. one, then there's no brainer. They got to be favourites right now. There's still a question mark because they're still, even though they're winning games, not conceding goals. They're not scoring that much. They yeah. only are, except for against Burnley, it was only, they are winning 1-0, mm-hmm. those kind of things. So it's still very tight. They still have the ability to drop points. They could have easily dropped points in this game against Brighton if they're, you know, one moment, just like Spurs. They but, were doing what we were doing before we kind of slipped off a bit. Yeah, exactly. So I think City definitely have the ability to drop points. But right now, you've got to say they're playing really, really well. So if they can get one of their strikers back on form, yeah, for sure, they're favourites. All right, and let's finish off talking about the game at the Emirates last night. Arsenal nil, Crystal Palace nil, as normal service has resumed at the Emirates. Um, Arsenal, yeah. I thought Arsenal were poor last night. Agreed. I thought I thought the only uh, team that deserved to win that was Crystal Palace. I mean, Arsenal had a good 5-10 minutes at the beginning of the second half, but apart from that, I thought Palace were well, well the better side. Yeah, I agree. I thought Palace pretty much had all the chances throughout the game you know Leno had a really good game again um who was it uh Tompkins hit the bar in the first half Benteke had a header with a great save from Leno but in the second half like Arsenal took so much risk and Palace had so many opportunities on the counter-attack to play Zaha in or Eze in or one of those players and they just continually failed Mm to find their man and play him in. They just, time and time again, they were ineffective on the counter. And they're going to, they, they end up ruining those missed chances because they didn't obviously get the win. But they were definitely by far the better team against Arsenal. Arsenal barely created anything. They're relying on, you know, two 18-year-olds who, despite talented players, you can't be relying on teenagers week in, week out in the Premier League and expect it to work. And yeah, they went on a good run, but 
I can't, you know, the, the, you can't rely on teenagers to be consistent. It's all right to give you an initial bounce or like one or two games, but you can't rely on them week in, week out exactly. in the Premier League. And, exactly. And that's the facts of the matter. I, I, mean, was, I was watching Arsenal fans after the game were saying, oh, it's because Tierney wasn't there. It's because Tierney wasn't there. If you're relying on your left back to win you games week in, week out, then you really do have big problems. And I know they won on a good run uh, against West Brom, against Brighton, against Chelsea. Three decent wins. Um, but... I always felt like, you know, their next bad result was coming. They were never this run was never gonna last. I and felt. now and now after they got Newcastle next, but after that they've got a really Well they should have lost against Newcastle in their cup, let's be honest. I know. And they got Newcastle in the league, but after that they go on a really, really tough run. So um you know, if the Arteta outs are not out there now, I mean they were out there a couple of weeks ago. If they're not out there now, they very well could be in a couple of weeks. But I just I was seeing it I saw a tweet from, I can't remember who it was, um, was some Arsenal fan, I think it was Bavs, and he was like, uh, people should um, lay off Smith Rowe because, you know, we, we it's not his fault because we need to take the burden off him. We need other players to take the burden off Smith Rowe. I'm like, think, I'm thinking like, this guy's had two good games. <laughs> what do you mean burden? <laughs> Why is there a burden on him? <laughs> this guy's had two good games. You're putting all the burden on him all of a sudden? Like, you're just because he had one good, a couple of good performances. Like, all right, everything on Smith Rowe now. Smith Rowe's the best. Let's put all, let's put all our eggs that's, in the Smith Rowe basket. That's what Arsenal fans are like, though. You know, every single year, like, something happens like this. You know, when Pepe dribbled it past Van Dijk. All the know, eggs in the Pepe you know, basket. Oh, Pepe's the best winger in the world. I won't have any word against Pepe ever again. Because <laughs> Now he can't get in the bloody team. Yeah, I you know. You know what I mean? I mean, this this happens time and time again with the Arsenal fans. They just get too carried away with every single little thing It's because they're starved of it. They're yeah, starved of anything decent. They're so, so desperate to get to something. So they to see something cling on to. They see something decent and then they just bam, bam, everything yeah. in that basket. Let's just chuck everything out that yeah. uh, to get some happiness. It's quality. Um, but but it's weird as well because we're now nearly halfway through. The, we are 17 games in and Aubameyang has just done nothing. Yeah, even nothing when they were season. even when they were winning games, he's yeah. still doing nothing. Nothing. He started again on the left. Nothing. Yeah. They're like, is he ever going to reclaim that form? I said before the start of the season, and it's coming to fruition right now. I said the 300, whatever he's on, 300, 350k a week curse, the captain's curse at Arsenal. Every single time Arsenal uh, announce a new captain, something wrong happens. You know, <laughs> something wrong happens. Either he leaves or they go off the the barrel. You know what I mean? I mean. Aubameyang, he's a completely different player to what we've seen the last couple of years. Completely different. I mean, he's just not getting he any He doesn't goals. seem to have that motivation. He doesn't seem that interested. I'm telling you, he's got his money in his pocket now. He's not interested anymore. He's gone the same way as Meza Ozil. And I can kind of see it now as well. Like, he probably signed a contract because he was, he was, hadn't heard certain, he made, the board probably made certain guarantees. He probably thought we're going to be challenging for top four at least this season. And he's looking at it now. He's like, the Arsenal just mid-table. They're nowhere near if but battling for top four, whatever they say, but even after their good run, they're not really near battling for top four. Like, where, why would he be motivated to challenge for mid table? It probably doesn't motivate him. Yeah, probably doesn't ma make him hungry. You know, I know that, but if he comes out and he says he loves Arsenal as much as he says it, he says he loves the fans as much as he says it. You would try on that pitch. You're yeah. a professional footballer. You can't just be like, oh, we're not going for top four now. Why would I stop trying on a pitch? It's hard to say that he he probably regrets it because of the pay packet he's on. But like in terms of if you had told him probably at the beginning of the season before he signed the contract, you're going to be 11th or 12th come eight to halfway through the season, he probably wouldn't have signed. Yeah, I mean, but also he's got to think of his his future and his family. I know that wherever he was going to go, he wasn't be on, going to be on small wages, but to be at Arsenal now on the wages he's on, absolutely astro astronomical for his age. Well, it could be another Meza Ozil situation in a year's time. Exactly, exactly. I think it will be, you know. If, if, he, ha if he has the rest of the season like he's having now, do you really think they're going to want to keep him for, for the next two years on the wages he's on? They're not going to have a choice because no that, one's. That's the point. He's they're not definitely gonna not going to have a choice because no one is paying three fifty a week or whatever he's on for a 32, 33 year old. No chance, except for maybe in the MLS. No chance. And they were so desperate for him to, for Arsenal to tie him down in the summer. Yeah, they. they, you know, they that was the only story got that, that they could think of. They didn't want an attacking midfielder. They didn't want anything. They just wanted Aubameyang to sign the team. Yeah. Well, you get what you wish for. Exactly. Be careful what you wish. Reap for. what you sow. Anyway. All right. That is the end of the Premier League's perspective. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any comments regarding anything we spoke about today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.